Yes, I thank Dandavat Puspanjali. My heart, like flowers thousands and thousands of times, at the lotus feet of my holy master, my supremely worshipable spiritual Gurudev, Asmadiya Paramarad Tumba Guru Pada Padma, Nitilila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pada Sto Tarasatasi, Rupa Nuga Acharya Varya, Sila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. Secondly, I offer my pranam at the lotus feet of my Param Gurudev to Srila Prabhupada and all of our Sri Rupanu Gagaudiya Guru Parampara. And finally, I offer my pranam to all of my very dear brothers and sisters, all Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis, Vanchakalpaturu Besta, Kripa Sandhupayavata, Putita Nambhavani Bio Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namo. Kochit Krishna Viti Prachala Rasanu Bhakti Rasika Sachitanya Kime Punara Pidishu Yasati Padam Sila Rupa Goswami Pad is sitting in Vrindavan and weeping. When will that day come? When once again the very beautiful golden form of Sri Satinandan Gohari will walk before the path of my eyes. And he's remembering the short time he spent with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Jagannath Puri. Sila Rupa Goswami Pai did not have so much association with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He met for a few days, first of all, in his, when Mahapu came to his village, Ram Kelly. Afterwards, he received instruction from Mahapu for about eight or ten days in Prayag, at Dasashvamedha Ghat. And later he came to visit Jagannath Puri for about eight months. So all together, not more, more than a year. Perhaps ten months, everything all together. That's the totality of his physical association with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Other associates, they're with Mahaprabhu from their childhood in Navadvip. Hmm? For 24 years, until he left, and some of them went to Puri, like Srila Haridas Thakur, hmm? Sorup Damodar Goswami, and so on. Raghunath Das Goswami also came and stayed for about 18 years with Mahaprabhu in Jagannath Puri. So, Paramananda Puri, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. They had years and years of association. But still we say, Sri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam, Stapitham Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadhamayam, Tadati Swapadantikam. When will Srila Rupa Goswami Pad give me the shelter of his lotus feet? Because he is the one who was empowered by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to manifest Mahaprabhu's innermost secret desires. So it was not the time, the amount of association, but the quality. His praying Payora says, today is Purat. I remember when I was in Puri at that time, Mahaprabhu with his associates, they used to mm, walk wandering through the beautiful flower gardens on the bank of the shore of the ocean and seeing the flowers and the trees the cows the parrots then it would be Uddipana inflaming the memory of Vrindavan in the heart of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nam Prabhu would come by himself and take over the tongue of Mahaprabhu. 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare Ram, Hare Ram, I cannot stop chanting. No, it's not in his control. And he will become Prem Vivosh, overwhelmed with love, completely helpless. Sometimes fainting, rolling on the ground, sometimes falling into the ocean. The Rupa Goswami is sitting in Vrindavan and reliving his memories of his association with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. What is it that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu inspired in the heart of Rupa Goswami? Rupa Goswami remembered during the Ratiyatra festival. Then Lord Jagannath would come out like this from the temple and take his seat upon his chariot. And there were millions of people there. And Mahaprabhu with his associates holding hands in three rings around him as crowd control to give him space for to dance. Mahaprabhu would come before Lord Jagannath. Jayati Jananivas, O Devaki Janmavadu, Yadavar Parishatswa, Dorbirasya Nadhana, Sirachara Vijinagna, Susmita, Simukhena, Prajapur Panitanam, Vadian Kama Devam, and offer prayers and then begin to dance. And after dancing for some time in ecstasy, Mahapu would stop and say, Yahakaumara harasa ivi varasta iva chaita chapas tetun militi malati surabaya prauda kadamba nila satya vasmi tatapi tatra surata via parali la vidu rave a road as he wait to see tarutale chaita samut kantate. Which verse of Srimad Bhagavatam is this? Hmm? No verse of Srimad Bhagavatam. Perhaps it's from another Purana. No. The Upanishads? Perhaps from a Rusik poet like Jayadev Goswami? No. It was just completely mundane poetry from Kavya, <laughs> from a book of poems. Kavya. Sahitya Darshan. Hmm? Sahitya Darpan. And also in Kavya Prakash. In those days when kids went to school, first they had to learn Sanskrit grammar and after that they have to learn Sahitya. Hmm, poetry, Kavya. So in those days Mahaprabhu, Rupa Goswami, all our Goswamis in their childhood, they were went through Kavya Prakash, Sahitya Darpan. These books of Alankar Shastra, poetic embellishments, figures of speech. So it's a mundane poem about a woman who was kind of dissatisfied with her marriage. And she was complaining to one of her friends. Oh, this is the same full moon shining, same breezes are blowing. I am the same woman and he's the same man, but I'm not feeling the same enthusiasm that I felt met, that I felt the first time we met. And she's opening, she's telling a secret to a friend because in Vedic culture, boys and girls can't date. They don't, they don't meet and have dates before they're married. The parents arrange the marriage. But she had secretly met with this boy in a hidden place, far away from the town, on the bank of the Raver River, uh, in a very dense thicket of rotten cane, where no one could see them. Hmm? And she gave her heart to, to him, gave everything to him. And she's remembered, oh, it was so glorious. Huh? So this is a mundane poetry about mundane person. And, and Mahaprabhu in Ratyatri, in great ecstasy, was singing this verse. It's a well-known verse. So people who were present and heard, they thought, what? Very strange. Huh? Can you imagine if the Pope will go to do communion and then start singing a pop song or something? Just everyone would really be bewildered, right? And so Mahaprabhu is a great spiritual figure and this is a big spiritual ceremony and <laughs> but Ru Sila Rupa Goswami was there and he could feel what Mahaprabhu was tasting in his heart and by the mercy of Mahaprabhu he, he wrote down another verse Prayaso Yam Priyaso Yam Krishna Sahachari Kurukshetra Militas Tataham Saradha Tadidam Mubayo Sangam Asukam Tata 
Kapyanta Kailan Madura Murali Pancha Majuse Mano Kalindi Pulina Vipinayas Priyayati Rupa Goswami realized that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was absorbed in Radha Bhav, the mood of Radhika, who had, after long separation from Sri Krishna when he was in Dwarka, she had traveled from Braj and come to Kurukshetra. And Krishna from Dwarka had come to Kurukshetra and they had met and it was a beautiful meeting, but something was missing. Krishna was there, Radhika was there, even the Lita Vishaka and the Sakis were there. But Vrindavan Dham was not there. Without Vrindavan Dham, huh? without the peacocks, the bumblebees, the parrots, Jamuna Devi, Giraj Govardhan, Bhansi Bhart, Seva Kunj, Nidduvan, then the love cannot fully manifest. So afterwards Radhika was speaking to Vishaka and said, I am the same Radha, he is the same Krishna. We are meeting just as we did in our youth for the first time. And it's wonderful. But my heart is yearning to hear see Krishna playing the fifth note upon his murali you know, on the bank of Jamuna in Vrindavan. That was Mahaprabhu's inner mood. Hmm? This exact sentiment had not been expressed openly anywhere. And so Mahaprabhu had to just take some mundane poetry which was kind of parallel to that. It was a prakrit rasa, a material rasa, but a shadow. Mm? This world is a shadow of the transcendental world. Shristi, stiti, pralaya sadhana, shakti eka, chayeva, vibhavani, durga. Chayeva, yasha, vibhavani, durga. So durga, the material energy, is the chaya, the shadow mm? of the transcendental world. But through that, Mapu was relishing divine sentiments. Everyone was confused, except for a few. Swarup Damada understood, but he didn't say it. Swarup Damada didn't speak. Swarup Damada was a great scholar, he was so learned. But no one really knew how learned he was because he didn't talk to anyone. Except for Mahaprabhu and Ramananda Rai in the Gambira. And young Raghunath Das Goswami also was very close to him. He used to tell him, but others he didn't speak so much. So, Rupa Goswami wrote this verse down on a palm leaf and at that time he was, Rupa Goswami was staying in the hut of Srila Haridas Thakur. Now that place is called Siddhapakul. Because Haridas Thakur was a reject from the Hindu society being a Muslim. And Rupa Goswami was also a reject from the Hindu society because he'd accepted service in the government of Nawab Hussain Shah, the emperor of Bengal, Muslim emperor. So he'd already also been ostracized from very strict, um, caste-conscious Hindu society of that time. So all the rejects had to stay together. I remember when I used to go with my Gurudev to Siddhapakul, he used to say, this is our place, because this is where Rupa Goswami used to stay. And especially you Westerners, you're all rejects. Because <laughs> <laughs> you can't even go in the Jagannath temple. So Haridas Thakur couldn't go in the Jagannath temple. Rupa Goswami, he could have forced his hand, but he was very humble, so he also, Rupa Goswami even, didn't go into the Jagannath temple. So he said, don't be, my good if you say you Westerners, don't be upset that you cannot go in, you're in God, good company. <laughs> Just stay here with Haridas Thakur and Rupa Goswami. Hmm? Have some mamata for that group. Sayutan Sri Rupanu Kahi Bhavan Gokulapane. Srila Raghunath Das Goswami said, being that group, Rupanuga group. So, uh -huh. Rupa Goswami wrote the verse and he tucked it into the thatch of the roof and he went to take a bath. In the meantime, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Sarup Damodar Goswami, they used to visit Srila Haridas Thakur every day. Though he couldn't go to see Lord Jagannath, Lord Jagannath himself, in the form of Lord Chaitanya, would personally come to see him because of the power of his Nam Bhajan. So Mahaprabhu came there and as he was entering, he saw something sticking out from the hut took it down and when he read it <sighs> and he knew oh Rupa Goswami has revealed my heart huh? Rupa Goswami came back from his bath and seeing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he gave pranam and Mahaprabhu said hey Swarup Damada how did he know my heart and Rupa Goswami stood up very humbly 
And Mahapu very lovingly slapped his face. Hey, Rupa, how did you know my heart? How did you know Swarup Damanar? Swarup Damanar Goswami said, Falena parigiyate. You can understand a tree by its fruit. Hmm? If you see a tree, you're not sure what it is. Wait till the fruit comes and you know. <laughs> huh? So Damodar Goswami said, From this we can understand. Because your heart is Gambir, inscrutable and mysterious and no one can understand it. If he has understood it, then we must know that you have bestowed upon him your causeless mercy. <laughs> Mahapu said to Swarup Damodar Goswami, Yes, it's true. The first time I met him, I could see he was very qualified. How, how was he qualified? When Rupa Goswami first met Mahaprabhu, he was giving pranam on the ground again and again and offering prayers. Oh, my Supreme Lord, there is no one more sinful than me. There is no one more offensive than me. And even though I understand my behavior and my thoughts are all sinful and offensive, but I even hesitate to give up those activities. So what can I say, my Lord? Very humbly with tears in his eyes, with grass, straw between his teeth. Mahaprabhu has taught humility to the whole world through Sri Rupa Goswami. If you want to have a Shakti Sanchar, Brindavaniyam Rasakheli Vartam Kalila Luptam Nija Shakti Utka Sanchari Rupai Vyatanot Pudasa Prabhu Iva Pradiva Loka Shistim Srila Kavi Karnapur about Rupa Goswami. He said, just as hmm, at the beginning of the creation, Supreme Lord Sri Krishna empowered the knowledge of creation into Tene Brahma Ridaya Adi Kavaye Muyanti Yatsuraha. He empowered the heart of Lord Brahma to be able to create the universe. So in the same way, Srila Rupa Goswami Pad, at that time in history, Vrindavan Yamra Sakali Vartam, that means the, the Varta, the discussion. The discussion of the subject of Vrindavan Yamra Sakheli, the beautiful confidential Nikunja Leela of Radha and Krishna disappeared from the world. Hmm? So just as the Supreme Lord empowered Lord Brahma to manifest the universe, Sri Chaitanya Mahapu empowered Rupa Goswami to manifest the universe of Rasa Tattva. Because he saw his extreme humility Dedication, surrender, and taste. So Mahaprabhu said to Swarup Damodar Goswami, Yes, I could see he was so qualified. So when I met him at Dashashwa Meda Ghat, and the wonderful thing is, Dashashwa Meda Ghat in Prayag, that's said to be the place where Krishna empowered Brahma to create the universe. Mm. So now Krishna has appeared as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And instead of Adi Kavaye Brahma, Adi Kavaye, that means the Kavi, the poet of Adi Rasa, Rupa Goswami, was empowered. It's the same pastime. <laughs> but uh, in relation to the aesthetics, not metaphysics. <laughs> so Mahaprabhu empowered Srila Rupa Goswami. And therefore, Srila Rupa Goswami became that person. Sri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam Yenabhutale. Mano Bishtam. Mana Abhishta. Abhishta means most cherished desire in the heart of Mahaprabhu. That was his Krishna and his most cherished desire is to realize the Madanakya Mahabhava of Radharani. No one knew what that was. What is that love of Radhika? Hmm? Yeah, she loves him very, very much. How much? Very much. No one knew the nature of this love. But Sri Rupa Goswami was empowered to reveal it through his Bhaktira Samrita Sindhu, Ujwani Lamani Lalit Madhav, Vidagda Madhav, Dan Kelly Komedi, Stava Mala. Hmm? And the other aspect of Mahaprabhu's Mano Bhishta was to manifest in this world Madhurya Mai Swarasiki Upasana. 
Kevala Madhurya Mai Swarasiki Upasana. Confirmed. <laughs> Hmm? Note it down. Kevala Madhurya Mai. That means the love for Sri Krishna, which is Kevala Madhurya, complete sweetness. No awareness whatsoever of Krishna's Bhagavata, his Godhood. Who is Krishna? Nanda Nandan, son of Nanda Maharaj. Son of Yashoda. Yashomati Nandana Brajabara Nagara. Brajabara Nagara. Nagara means not husband, lover. Secret sweetheart of Braja Gopis. That Krishna. Completely human. Kevala Madhurya Mai Swarasiki Upasana. Other saints at the time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, other Sampradayas at the time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, just after that, they also worship Radha and Krishna. But they worship Radha and Krishna in the mood of Nikta Milan. Radha and Krishna are always together in the Nikunj. Hmm? Nitya Milan, Nitya Sambhog. Hmm. So in that Leela, they never go home. There's no Madhya Shoda, Nanda Maharaj, cows, gopis, even no Chandravali. No other groups of gopis, just Radhika and her group. So I think, well, that's the highest thing. No. Because all of those other ingredients uh, nourish, they're the Ras Upakar. They nourished the astonishing pastimes of Radha and Krishna. If Radha and Krishna are always together in the Kunj, then there's no question of them being either married or unmarried, Swaki or Parakya. Because it's, to be married or unmarried is a human like thing. And to be eternally in a Kunj, humans can't do that. Sometimes you have to go home. Sometimes you have to have some responsibility to the rest of your family or society or something or whatever, you can. So, it's more of a Lakshmi Narayan type of situation, mm. but in Vrindavan setting. So it's not really Kevala Madhurya Mai, and it's not Swarasiki. It is Mantumai Upasana, when Radha Krishna, in, they are realized and served in one location. That worship is called Mantumai Upasana, Ekastiti, one location. But Mahapu wanted to reveal what had never been revealed before, the Swarasiku Pasana, Astakali of Leela of Radha and Krishna, which is moving, moving, moving. Braj, Braj means moving, Brajati, he moves. Brajati, he moves. He moves from, in the early morning, Radha Krishna wake up and they have to quickly return to their homes before everyone finds out they're missing and there's a big scandal in the village. Huh? And Radhika will have to quickly go to Yavat and Krishna to Nandagaon. Then Radhika will wake up and be bathed and dressed by her sakis, and then she'll come to cook in the kitchen of Madhya Shoda. Krishna will go out to the cow shed to milk the cows, then come back, take his bath, take breakfast. Radharani will watch from an upstairs window, lattice work, looking at Krishna, tasting her cooking. Hmm? Wife has great, feels great pleasure in Vedic culture. Wife feels great pleasure seeing her husband eating the things she's cooked. Because things she prepared with love with her own hands will now become his body. It's a very intimate seva. But Radhika, she's not married to Krishna. So she has to experience that happiness from a hidden, looking through a lattice, hidden window in the balcony. I'll see, tasting. And the dasis of Radhika, Rupa Manjari, Atta Manjari, they're looking at Radhika and relishing how Radhika is relishing how Krishna is tasting her love. That's our bhava. When you listen, always listen from the perspective of your own sambandha. Hmm? Not like a tourist. <laughs> hmm? Window shopping. Leela's going on out there behind the glass and in the street somewhere, looking in. Hmm? Always here, in from the perspective of the sambandha given by our Gurudev in the Gopal Mantra, the time of Diksha. And calm Gayatri. Brinda bona aprakritta navina madana kama bija kama gayatri jara upasan. So, uh, if Radha Krishna is always together in the kunj, this is mantra maya upasana. And there's no moving around. Now Krishna will have to leave the village and take the cows to graze in the forest, leaving the gopis standing on their doorsteps, just thinking, I wish I could go with him. But I can't. But anyway, the quicker he goes, the sooner there will be a chance to meet him at Govardhan somewhere. Especially Radha Kund. 
so they'll meet late. And in this way, the pastimes are moving from place to place. And being, serving Radha Krishna internally in those pastimes, that is called Swarasi Kupasana. So through Srila Rupa Goswami part, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu revealed his Mano Bishnu, which has two part, parts. His, Krishna's desire to relish the love, Madanakya Mahabhav, what is that? Rupa Goswami described it. And for the devotees, how they'll mm, participate in the pastimes of Radha Krishna through the process of Mad Kevala Madhurya Mai Swarasiki Upasana. And this is why we say Sri Chaitanya Manobistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapatantika. So, but to get to that point, Srila Rupa Goswami had to explain all the stages. He had to start from the beginning. Like, what is bhakti? What's bhakti? And the Arabila Sita Shunyam. Jnana Kamad Dhanavritam. Bhakti means the continuous, unbroken, uninterrupted cultivation of all activities of your body, mind and words flowing without interruption like a stream of honey from a jar. And not only all activities but all sentiments. Everything only for the Kalyan, the benefit of Krishna, not the happiness of Krishna. Some things make Krishna happy, but it's not really for his benefit. You know? Like when Krishna's fighting with Chanur and Mustik, he gets happiness from fighting with them. But they don't, they're pleasing him, but they don't have his benefit in mind. They're trying to kill him. <laughs> so Chanur and Mustik are not doing bhakti. <laughs> so there are other things Krishna likes that are not really good for him. Like meeting with Chandravali. <laughs> that also gives him some happiness, I guess. <laughs> if you're thirsty, then water's something. It's not as good as milk, but uh, water will some water will do. So, but that's not good for him. So, Anukuya in Krishna Ushilanam. The, it should be the continuous, unbroken, uninterrupted cultivation of all endeavors of the body, mind and words and of sentiments also which are meant exclusively for the benefit of Krishna in which there is Anyabhlasta Shunyam, not even the slightest trace, not even the slightest smell of any worldly desire for sense gratification. Huh? And it should not be covered by karma, gyan, yoga, tapasya. So this is Rupa Goswami's Paribhasha, definition of pure bhakti. Mm -hmm. But it's not explaining ontologically what this pure bhakti is. Understand, bhakti is not something that you can do, actually, with the, just the material body. Mm. Confirm. <laughs> Atasi Krishna Namadi Nabhavat Gryam Indriya. Krishna's name, form, coins and pastimes cannot be experienced. They cannot be touched. They cannot be accepted by our senses. Sevan Mukhi Jiva Do Swayam Daha But when one becomes Sevan Mukh, that is dedicated and surrendered, serving in Anugatya, Anukulyena, Krishna Anu, 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 Anu. Don't forget this word, Anugatya. Anu is very important. Means Nirantarya Mai. Nirantaryamai, uninterrupted, but also Anu means Anugatya. Tannama Rupa Charitahari Sukirtananu Smitjokramena Rasana Manasin Yojat Chistam Brajeta Danu Ragi Chadanu Gami Kalam Nayeta Kilabitti Pudesa Saram. The essence of all advice, Rupa Goswami. Anu 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 Anu. Anugatya being under the guidance of a Brajrasik Vaishnava is absolutely essential. Mahat Kripa Bina Kon Kama Bhakti Noe. Krishna Bhakti Duri Rahoi Sangsha Nahi Shai Krishna Skaraj Goswami Pai said without the blessing without coming under the guidance in the Anugati of a Mahat a great liberated soul then any activity you do will not be Bhakti hmm? what to speak of Bhakti you will not be able to even the the, the, the the tightness of your bondage in this material world will not get loose you'll be stuck years and years and years go by still not getting out of different bad habits and 
uncontrolled mind and attachments and so on. Can it remain aloof from the sense objects to be in the avesh absorption in the pastimes of Sri Krishna? Hmm. When, we, when it comes, it comes when we in Anugati flowing in the wake under the directions outwardly and inwardly of a pure Vaishnava. Srila Raghunath Daska Swami has said, Anurajya Radha Pada Boja Renum Anasritya Prindata Vitat Padankam Asambhasya Tad Bhava Gambira Chitan Kuta Shama Sindhu Rasa Shavagaha Where is the ocean of Ras? Which way do I go? I don't know. Now who can find it? No one knows in which way to make their first step. Unless they fulfill three conditions. Anurajya Radha Pada Boja Renum they dedicate themselves completely to worshipping the dust of the feet of the daughter of Prashubhanu Maharaj. One. Two. Anasritya Pandata Vitat Patankam. One must take shelter of Brajamanda. Go to Brajamanda and weep there beneath the trees of Braja. Even that will not be enough. Third condition. Asambhasitat Bhava Gambira Jitan. And one must engage in conversation, discussion with those Brajrasik Rupanuga Vaishnavas whose hearts are Gambir, deeply absorbed in the Radha Krishna Yugal Seva, conversing with them. And then slowly, slowly the form will clear and some idea comes how to go to the ocean of Rasa. Huh? Even if you worship Radha Krishna, but not following the Vaishnavas in the line of Rupa Goswami, then one may realize Radha Krishna to some degree. Hmm? But it will not be the Kevala Madhurya Mai Swarasi Kupasana, the Purana, Puranatama, Purata, Puranatara, Punatamam, the foolish manifestation. Krishna Chandra, Krishna is a Purana Chandra. He is the full moon of all rasas. Akila Rasamrita Moti Prasimara Ruchi Rudhatara Kapalihi. First verse of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. The fullest manifestation of all the rasa of Radha Krishna's Leela. It will come when we fulfill these three conditions. Huh? So what is this bhakti? There was a definition. But practically speaking, bhakti is the vilas of Swarup Shakti. Vilas means the play. And Swarup Shakti means Krishna's internal potency. Krishna's internal potency is very playful and giving joy to him all the time. And when by our connection with the pure Vaishnava, that Swarup Shakti is transferred, re reflected into our heart and begins to play there, then that is Bhakti. So Ru Sil Rupa Goswami has explained so beautifully, precisely and scientifically in Bhakti Rasamrita Sin. Today uh, you may have noticed we're discussing something about the Avadan Vaishishta, the, the speciality of the contribution of Sil Rupa Goswami. So starting at the beginning, we'll try to go somewhere a little bit. There, but you're starting in the beginning, what is Bhakti? So Rupa Goswami he said, hmm? Avir Bhuya Mano Britto Brajanti Tat Swayam Swayam Prakash Rupapi Vashamana Prakasyavat. It's so precise. He's saying that you have uh, the Chitta Vritti, Mano Vritti. Avibu ya mano brito. Here mano brito or chitta brito. And does anyone know Patanjali Lila? In second sutra. Yoga is chitta brito in the road. Try to stop the chitta brito. That means the whirlpools in the, your mind stuff. Hmm? Your mind, that chitta is the mind stuff. And it's moving. And all your thoughts and feelings and conceptions and ideas, they're just ripples in that chitta, that mind stuff. Hmm? But why is your mind always moving? Hmm? It's always moving. Even when you're tired, you fall asleep, the mind's still moving. Huh? How is that? In the Upanishads, it's explained. Eisho nur atma chaitasa vedita vyo yasmin prana panchada samvishesha pranais chitam sarvamotam prajanan tasmin vishudei vivabat yeshatma the meaning is, Eshon or Atma, Atma the soul is minute. It's a very tiny atom of Krishna's, a prakash of Krishna's tatasta shakti. And this atom is now covered by gross and subtle body. 
the subtle body hmm, is first element is a chitta and the ego mind intelligence they're all the evolutes of that chitta so we call chitta the, for the psychological body mm-hmm. now in that that chitta pranaischa sarvam uh, pranaischitam sarvam otam the word otam means interwoven the substance of your mind is interwoven with threads perhaps if you have read third canto of anyone read third canto of shrimad bhagavatam yes third can good and 11th canto anyone so you see there in the description of the creation of the universe there's something called sutra tattva the, the thread tattva it's the first appearance of the rajas in mahatattva and it's called sutra tattva so the portion of the mahatattva which is in your subtle body is called your chitta and that sutra tattva sutra means thread mm-hmm. sutra tattva mm-hmm. is also interwoven in your mind stuff so the sutra tattva is also called it's known it's very famous by another name prana mm-hmm. so your mind stuff is interwoven with many many threads sutra tattva that is pran and because the pran has pran vayan apan saman udhan pran goes up pran goes down pran expands pran contracts pran has the saman makes some equilibrium like this so the prans are always moving and it's the the oscillation of the threads of sutra tattva within your mind stuff which are producing all your thoughts and feelings that's all it is people <laughs> don't sweat the small stuff don't sweat the big stuff don't sweat be detached huh? no drama huh? that's all it is people huh? no drama so this verse is saying esho nuratya chaita savaditavya you can know your soul when yasmin prana panchada sam vishesha the five functions of pran become withdrawn hmm? the yogis try to do it mechanically by pratyahara we do it by chanting hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare so you might say well how can chanting control your pran don't i have to do this <laughs> all this stuff huh? so we'll uh, we'll explain but here the upanishad is saying the soul can know himself when all the functions of pran the, have been withdrawn mm-hmm. and pranaischa sarvam o pranaischitam sarvam otam prajanan for the general people they this sutra tat is spreading all over their mind stuff and making it oscillate and only when tasmin vishuddhe vibhatyesha atma when the the mind stuff the chitta becomes um the purified from these movements of the pran then the qualities of the soul manifest so that's how we realize, realize ourselves so Ch- this is the first teaching of chaitanya mahaprabhu chaito darpana marjanam clean the mirror of your chitta it means by chanting the oscillations of the sutra tattva of the pran become completely controlled and withdrawn by chanting and then mind becomes still like a mirror and then you can see yourself and you can see krishna reflected there chaito darpana marjanam hmm. hmm? so rupa goswami part he's saying what is bhakti and in explaining that he's saying avir bhuya mano britto brajanti tat swarupatam which means that when a person is engaged in devotional service chanting the holy name and remembering krishna even though it seems like they're doing it with their senses and in the beginning you are you're just taking your material senses and mind mm-hmm. and engaging under the guidance of guru but because of the connection with the pure devotees in whose heart there is bhakti then avir bhuya avir bhuya means avir bhav like avatar avir bhav appearance so just as lord ram has his avir bhav his appearance day and from the transcendent world manifests in this world just as nishingadev has his avir bhav his appearance day and from the transcendent world manifests in this world so in the same way bhakti shakti the essence of krishna's internal potency samvit and ladini 
does Avir Bhav in your manobritis. In other words, your Prakrit Pran, your material Pran, which is being engaged in hearing, chanting and remembering, becomes the, there is an Avir Bhav, a descent, an avatar of Aprakrita Pran. And it takes over your Prakrit Pran. And now all your thoughts and feelings have been taken over by Swarup Shakti. And when that happens when you're chanting, that is called realization. You see? Because the mind cannot realize Krishna. Krishna's body is Satchitananda bigger. It's made of in the internal potency. So only that internal potency can reveal his form. So when the Swarup Shakti, you begin to engage under the guidance of Guru, that Swarup Shakti comes, and on top of your the um, Prakrit Pran, this Aprakrita Pran comes and takes over all your Mano Britis. Mm -hmm. So then, so Rupa Goswami is saying, Avi bu Buya Mano Brito, mm -hmm. the appearance in the Mano Briti, Brajanti Tatsarupatam, and it becomes Tatsarupatam, it means it becomes one with your own mind. Mm -hmm. The Swarup Shakti, Bhakti has become one with your own Pran now. And therefore, what happens? Swayam prakasha rupopi bhashamana prakashavat. Bhashamana prakasha. Bhashamana is a technical term. You can see it's discussed by Patanjali in the Yoga Sutras also. That when you think of an object, then bhashamana, it's, it's the, your, your mind transforms and becomes that object, and then the consciousness of your soul illuminates it and you see it in your mind's eye. That's called bhashamana prakash. prakash. Your soul does the prakash of that which is Basaman uh, shining, a facsimile of the object produced by your uh, mental functions. Hmm? But here Rupa Goswami is saying, Basyamana Prakashivat. Swayam Prakasha Rupapi. Even though the forms which are manifest in your heart by Krishna's internal potency bhakti are Swayam Prakash, they are self illuminating, they're revealing themselves. But you experience it as if it's just something in your mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's as if you, you're thinking. You're, you're thinking about Krishna, his name, qualities, pastimes. And as you, then you start to remember pastimes that you've never heard before. And they're just going in a flow by itself. So as it's appearing, it, it, it seems that it's, it seems that it's your, your manobriti, but it's not. Because the Swarup Shakti has taken over and the spiritual objects, Krishna, His Naam, Rup, Guna, Lila, Aswayam, Prakash, self-manifesting to your soul. Your soul is not illuminating them, they are illuminating themselves to you. So Rupa Goswami Pad said, Atashi Krishna Namadi Nabhavet Graham Indriyai Sevan Mukhi As soon as you become absorbed in Seva Swayam Evas Puratyada They illuminate themselves within your heart and dispel all darkness of ignorance. Hmm. Huh? Had anyone before in the history of the universe in this day of Lord Brahma explained bhakti so beautifully? Hmm. Before Srila Rupa Goswami? No. Never. No. no. <laughs> Srila Rupa Goswami part. <laughs> huh? You are very lucky to come in the line of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Try to be Rupa Nuga. Really. That means to immerse yourself in the vichardara, the current of Rupa Goswami's conception. Huh? There's nothing more glorious than this. Yeah. It's the gift that Mahaprabhu want to give, wanted to give that was never given before. But he did it through Srila Rupa Goswami. Huh? So Srila Rupa Goswami has described bhakti, he's described the various rasas, and especially he's described the glories of Radharani in an unprecedented way. Hmm? How glorious is Radhika? Even Krishna, who is so beautiful, Sakshat Manmata Manmata, he's so beautiful he can uh, enchant the hearts of millions and millions of Kamadevs. Only smelling the fragrance of Krishna far away, all the cupids of millions of universes faint. And they faint because they faint in anxiety, that they become overwhelmed. Oh, he's so much more qualified than me, I want to serve him, but I cannot, and they faint in anxiety. <laughs> That's how beautiful Krishna is. But Radhika has that effect on Krishna. Yasya kada pivasananchala kela nutta danyati danya pavanena kritatamani yogendra doganamagati madhusudanopi 
Sasyana most to Brishubanu Bhuvo Dishapi. Hmm? Krishna not even seeing Radharani. But Krishna was on the bank of Radhakund and far on the other side. Radhika had passed by with her sakis. And the breeze had touched the corner of her cloth, which was uh, had been infused with her anger sorab, the fragrance of her divine form. And the breeze touched her cloth and picked up a little of that fragrance and became intoxicated. And being intoxicated, the breeze couldn't move very quickly. So it just staggered across the surface of Radhika and ah, Radhe, Radhe, Radhe. And Krishna on the other side, who was burning in separation from Radhika, he suddenly picked up that fragrance in the breeze and folded his hands and prayed to the breeze, thank you, thank you. Dandyati dhanya pavaneem and nikritata mani. Oh breeze, you have made me so fortunate that from far away I could catch the fragrance of the cloth of the daughter of Brishabhanu Maharaj. I feel my life successful. Who is that Krishna? Yogendra Durga Magatiya Madhusudanopi. Hmm? The Yogendras, Navi Yogendras, great masters of mystic power. If in their samadhi for thousands of years, for one second, they get a glimpse of the light emanating from the tips of Krishna's toenail, then they think, my life is successful. Hmm? But that Krishna, only catching the fragrance of Radhika from far away, thinks his life is successful. Tasyana mostu brashabhanu bhuvo dishepi. I am simply bowing down in the direction of Radharani's father's house in Varsana. <laughs> How glorious is Radhika. We know Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi that Radhika has a beautiful complexion like molten gold. But with each step she takes towards Krishna in anticipation of meeting with him. Her love becomes, though it's viborapi kalayan sada bibridhim, though her love is all-pervading, leaving no room for expansion, it's still expanding, it's still increasing. And as her brain is increasing with every step as she goes through the forest on her way to meet with Krishna, so, because every color of the spiritual world is a bhav, so when her bhav increases, her beauty of, of her golden complexion increases with each step. So Krishna is sitting alone in the forest and then he looks and sees why are all the birds becoming restless and chirping? Why are the trees trembling and honey shedding from their, the, the honeycombs on the branches? What's going on? And then he saw that the whole forest became permeated with the golden light. An ilavrita hantabu agraikim kalayami kanchana rucham udgari gauri disha amgyatam mani nupura dhoni bharam ali ali gana lankita kanti nam kula devata vilasi tumbrindata vivindati. This is Rupa Goswami's poetry. Krishna looked. And so, the whole forest of Vrindavan is bathed in a nectarine golden light. And he became confused. He thought, where am I? Did I take a wrong turn? Did I become lost? And end up in the valley of Ilavrita Varsh? No? Do you read the fifth canto? So Ilavrita Varsh is a place, it's a, at the foot of Sumeru mountain, it's a golden mountain. So because there's a huge mountain of gold, then when the sun shines from the mountain, the forest becomes all filled with the golden luster. So Krishna thought, what happened? Did I take a wrong turn and end up in Ilavrita Varsh? Where is this Agraikim Kalayami Kanchana Rachan Udgara Gauri Disha? Where is this golden effulgence coming from? Amgyatam Maninu Pura Dhanibaram. Then he heard the sound of ankle bells. Aneka Mantra Nada Mandrinu Pura Vras Kalat Samaja Raja Hangsa Vangsa Vikkunati Gaurave. Like the singing of swans. Hmm? singing mantras that can control the mind of Krishna. And when he heard the, the sound of Radhika's ankle bells coming, Amgyatam Maninu Pradhvani Bharan, oh, perhaps it's the goddess of, of the luster, the goddess of, of effulgence herself is coming, I can hear ankle bells to play in this forest. Krishna is completely confused. 
even though he's seen Radhika before. But even when he sees her, he forgets. Milata milata wo mila wo chaye, mili mila nikibu, mila ras kavara prema so pratichana bar tapu. Radha Krishna are meeting, but even meeting they want to meet. Even meeting they forget that they are meeting. Paki god kachikari, ye rasakan kiriti. It is said, you know, Radha Krishna play a game. It's called Chaupar. In the West it's like Ludo. So you have pieces and you have to throw dice. Albert Einstein said, God doesn't play dice. He was completely wrong. <laughs> so Radha Krishna, in the, they go from Kunj, Kunj in Radha Kunj. In one of the Kunjas, it's the Hamant. There's, each, there's a different season in each Kunj. So one of them is Hamant Kunj. So it's a cold season. So when it's cold, you don't go out. You stay in and play board games. So when Radha Krishna comes to that Kunj, then because Krishna has defeated Radharani in so many games, Holy Leela, throwing colors, Jaud Kelly playing in the water, Madhupan, Hindu Leela, swinging, all these are power games. So Krishna is strong. And so he's defeated Radharani many times. So Radharani said, Oh Vishaka, he's become so proud from defe defeating us. Bring the board games. Now. Let's play something that requires some brains. <laughs> so I can dispatch his pride at once. So then the leader brings the selection of board games. What will we play today? Chess? Okay, we'll play Chopar, Ludo. So then they have the Chopar, it's like this. And you have pieces and you throw the dice. And you have to get your piece onto a safe house. And when it's in the safe, now it's safe. The, the other player can't take your piece anymore. Hmm? So whatever you do, when you get your piece to the, piece, one piece to the safe house, you throw the dice again, you move the other pieces. You don't, you'd have to be a complete imbecile to take a piece which has arrived in the safe house and then throw the and then move it again and now, now it, it becomes vulnerable to the other player's pieces no one would do that no one would do that I mean you can do it if you want but hmm? then probably your IQ is about the same as your shoe size <laughs> huh? or less so no one does that so that is, that is called the pakigot pakigot means the piece has come in the safe house. But Pakigo Kachikari, Ye Rasa Kankiriti. It is the nature of Rasa that even when the peace came to the safe house, then you undo all your hard work and keep moving. That means that when Radha Krishna meet, they embrace, they spend the whole night together. And in the morning they wake up and look at each other, who are you? Huh? That which became mature, the Leela which became mature became Kacha again. Completely fresh and new. Because of Anurag. Anurag makes the... Exp Radhika sees Krishna as newer and newer, fresher and fresher at every moment. And Krishna sees Radhika also in the same way. But Krishna's Anurag is not as intense as Radhika's Anurag. Anurag asks or Samveda. Samveda Dasha Prabhupada Radhika goes to Samveda Dasha. Krishna cannot go there. That's why he has to appear as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to find out what it's like. So, when Radhika comes through the forest, says, who is that? Who is? And finally, she, he sees Radhika. Oh. And Radhika looks, oh, Bala, who is that boy? Hmm? Lalita said, what are you talking about? You met with him so many times. Radhika says, don't joke with me. Don't make jokes at my expense. Who is he? He's the son of Nanda Maharaj. Oh, Nanda, Nanda. Nanda, Nanda. Should we meet with him? No. No. We should not meet. Don't meet with anyone called Nanda Nanda. It will have a very negative effect on your life. Look how many ends are in his name. Na, na, da, na, da, na. Na, da, na, da, na. Five ends in his name. Na, na. No, 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 no. Very negative. Don't meet with him. <laughs> so the Prema of Radhika and Krishna is like this. So astonishing, we cannot imagine. Rupa Goswami has uh, opened up all the secrets of Radha Krishna's brain. Hmm? One of the beautiful aspects of this love is that it's not expressed. It is said, brain moves like a snake. Not in a straight line, very crooked. So Radhika's brain is very... 
And she does the opposite of what Krishna wants, to increase his eagerness. And sometimes she does it deliberately, and sometimes she does it just spontaneously, because it's her nature. Bhamya Bhav, contrary mood. And sometimes even she doesn't want to do it, but her nature makes her do it. And sometimes she doesn't want to do it, and she's got her nature under control, but Lalita, Lalita forces her to be contrary. <laughs> Krishna's coming, but he's, don't look at him. <laughs> or if you look at him, frown. <laughs> oh, Lalita, you taught me how to frown at Krishna and I practiced in front of a mirror. 108 different frowns. <laughs> but now I see Krishna coming, I've forgotten them all. Madakshina <laughs> Bhava Kalanki, don't be, con don't be submissive to him. Radhe Giram Srinihutamiti Shikshan. Look, I'm older than you, Radharani. Lalita said, I'm 27 days older than you. I have experience. Listen to the voice of experience. <laughs> hmm? I'm telling you this. Hitam, Hitam is it's for your benefit. You don't understand. When Krishna plays his flute, all the gopis run to meet you. Don't be like them. You wait. Keep your dignity. Be unique. Be special. Make him wait. Don't be like the other gopis. Yeah, they are very easy to get. Krishna will become bored with them after some time. Be contrary. And then he, you will always fascinate him. So Lalita gives advice like this. Rupa Goswami has written all, described in his poetry the beautiful advice and the friendship of Lalita Sakhi. That's why we want to follow, serve Radhika, but in the group of Lalita Sakhi, under the guidance of Rupa Manjuri. This is our line, very specific. So, this love is very crooked and not expressed directly. Because if it will be expressed directly, it will be diminished. Mm -hmm. You can see. When Sri Krishna disappeared from Rasalila and Braj Gopis were weeping in separation. Pranatadehinam papakashanam trinacharanugam Shri Niketanam Pani Parnapitam Shri Mukam Bhujam Padam Bhujam Krindu Kuchi Shunda Krindi Rich Chayam Krishna's disappeared and he's, he must be hiding somewhere. So gopis are weeping and trying to encourage him to come back. Please come back, Krishna. Well, why should I come back? Because I have a burning pain in my heart. And it can only be removed if I take your soft lotus feet and hold them on my chest. And then the, the pain of my desire will be pacified. Gopis are saying, and if Krishna will say, I can't do that, that's sinful. I'm not going near any married ladies. And I'm Pukka Brahmachari. <laughs> hmm? So gopis are saying, Pranata Dehinam Papakashanam. Oh Krishna, Gagacharya at your name giving ceremony, Namkaran Samskar. He said, Tasman Nandat Majoyam Te Narayana Sumo Gunai. Oh Nandamaraj, your son has qualities just like Lord Narayan. So if someone will bow down to the lotus feet of Lord Narayan, they become free from all sins. Pranata Dehinam Papakashanam. So how can that person who just bowing down to his feet, one becomes free from all sins, how could those feet do sins? That's not possible. So don't worry about anything, Krishna. Please come at once and let us place your lotus feet on our hearts. Hmm? Krishna said, no, 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 no. Because you're... Your heart is very hard, very rough. You see? Because uh, it, when someone has a sattvic bhav, then there's romance, pulak, hairs are standing on end, and the, the whole surface of the skin becomes all... Huh? Huh? Like that. Hmm? So when birds gopis hold the lotus feet of Krishna on their body, they have extreme horripilation. Krishna said, my feet are very soft, I don't want to put my feet on this rough place. Gopi said, Trinacharanugam Shri Niketanam Trinacharanugam 
Trinachara means cows who wander here and there chewing grass. Every day you're following the cows. They don't stick on the soft sandy path. They wander off and into the brambles looking for something to eat. And with your bare foot you run after the cows, stepping on all the brambles. So don't give us this excuse. Trinachara uh -huh. Anugam. So then, Sri Krishna said, it's not appropriate. Gopi said, Trinacharanugam Sriniketanam. Sriniketanam. No, it's most appropriate. Hmm? Those who are alike should associate together. Yasya satsang tipung sa manivatsyat satad gunai. Sakula dyat do dhima sayutaneva sang sarayat. Very important verse of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. It says, one's consciousness is like a crystal and it reflects the qualities of whomever you associate with. Therefore, you should associate with those persons whom you want to be like. And all the nectar of their heart, their consciousness will come to you. Hmm? Actually, this verse, which is quoted by Rupa Goswami, but to some is actually spoken by Hirani Kashipu. <laughs> he was instructing Prahlad Maharaj, because he thought his son has been completely deviated by bad association. Mm -hmm. So it's all Sayuta Meva Sayuta. You associate with your own dynasty. If you want to be a good demon, be with us. <laughs> Don't associate with these people, the Tilak and the Tantimala. And hmm? So Rupa Goswami takes that verse of Hari Bhakti Sudadaya of Hirani Kashipu and he puts it in Bhakti Rasa Mrtasindu because it, wor it works both ways. Mm -hmm. hmm? So those who are alike or those who are similar and you want to be, become perfect in the same mood, as some person, then associate with them and their bhava will overflow and it will illuminate the crystal of your heart. Hmm? So Krishna said, it's inappropriate. Hmm? I, I should not put my lotus feet on your heart. It's not appropriate sangha association. Hmm? Gopi said, no, no, it's very appropriate association. Why is that? Because the upper part of your lotus feet is a dark sham color. And the lower part of your lotus feet is a soft reddish, like a lotus flower. And your toenails are shining like moons, like drops of sandalwood paste. And in the same way, we decorate the upper portion of our chest with red kumkum, the lower portion with a dark kasturi, and the middle portion with dots of sandalwood paste. So, Sri Niketanam, your feet are the abode of beauty, and our body is the abode of beauty, so these two should associate together. But Krishna said, but you, I think that you are so lusty that your body must be very hot. So I don't want to keep my feet there. Gopi said, what are you talking about? Kaliya had a hundred heads and they were breathing fire and, and poison, burning fire and poison and you kept your feet on the heads of Kaliya. So why not put your lotus feet on our heart? Hmm? Oh, Pani Panapitam, Krishna was thinking, look, if I come and meet with you, your husbands will be very angry. Gopi said, we're not worried about that. Kaliya was so angry and you just danced on his head. If our husbands give any problem, you can just do the same to them. Pani Panapitam, Te Padambujam. So therefore, Krinukucheshuna Krindi Ritschayam. Krishna, please, from wherever you're hiding, please come back. We're feeling so much pain. Just pacify the, the thirst of our heart with the touch of your lotus feet. Huh? Gopis are saying this. Huh? But you have to know that love is crooked and it's never expressed. So what they're saying isn't what they really mean. This is why it's important. You can't just read Bhagavatam and take it at face value because it's kavya, it's poetry. The meaning is not in the words. The meaning is in the byanjan, in the dwani, the echoes of the implications. And only those who are in the bhav of Braj Gopis can feel the implications. So Jaha Bhagavata Pada Vaishnava Arastani. So Dhamma Swami said, if, if you want to understand Srimad Bhagavatam, you must sit at the feet of a pure Vaishnava. Then you can have some glimpse of what this Srimad Bhagavatam is about. Gopis are not saying what they want to say because Prem is crooked. Hmm? Once Radharani said, Krishna did, came disguised as a demigoddess and began to criticize Krishna. Krishna is so bad. Why do you love him? 
So Krishna was trying to trick Radharani into opening out because she'd never tell Krishna to his face while she loves him. So Krishna wanted to find out, so he made this plan. So Radharani said, you see, love is like this. It's like a lamp that shines in the heart. And this lamp, just like if there's a cottage and there's a lamp inside, then the light shines out through the windows. So in the same way, when Prem is in the heart of a person, it shines out from their eyes. And from their face, they're glowing with that love. But they never say it. That's why the most popular phrase today is, I love you. <laughs> because no one loves anyone. <laughs> huh? Because when there's real love, you cannot express... If you will try to express even, the voice will become choked. And you cannot speak. Too much emotion is there. So, so Radhika said, when love is in the heart, it cannot be spoken. And if one were to speak... That means to open the mouth. That's like opening the door of that cottage. And then the wind of pride will blow and extinguish that lamp of love. <laughs> opening the mouth and speaking, the wind of pride will extinguish the love. It will go down. So it's not spoken. So when bread, you have to know that when bread gopis are singing this pranata day in ampapakashanam, they're not saying what they mean. They're hiding what they mean. This is called avahitta bhav. Avahitta means uh, dissimulation. Dissimulation is when you do something uh, to hide something else. You have one emotion, but then you get another emotion and you use that emotion to cover the original emotion because of another emotion. Uh, there are three ingredients in avahitta bhav. Rupa Goswami has explained everything. Just Hmm. I'm just here today and just thinking Jai Sri Rupa Goswami <laughs> make Rupa Goswami your, e your hero your idol your all in all life and soul so Abhita Bhav they're hiding everything but somehow or other it's the nature of brain that though they try to hide it it somehow peeps out hmm? it will come out somehow or other just like this one poem. What is that? Mm. Ah. Kera kun, kera kun, kashi kushi, vairi, priti madupan, rahiman, roki ne roki, jana sokala jahan. Roki ne roki, sahit jana sakala jahan. Yeah, roki ne roki, jana sakala jahan. You know? Means, anyone else speak Hindi here? <laughs> yeah? Yeah? So he's saying, Ker kun kashi kushi the vairi priti madupat. There are seven things that you can try to hide, but they'll always come out, and everyone will know. First one, care, means when you care about someone. Let's say there's someone and you care about them, but you don't want others to know. But you'll say something or you do something. Or if you don't care about someone and you're trying to show that you do, but you'll say something you do and it will come out and then it will... Actually, you don't care. Like that. So, care kun. Kun, kun means blood. Huh? You try to hide hmm? that someone's your own blood relative. Just like Kunti Devi. When Krishna did the funeral ceremony of, of Karna, Everyone was there honoring, he is a great warrior, but Kunti Devi was crying. Yudhisthira Maharaj said, why are you crying? He said, he's your eldest brother. And Yudhisthira Maharaj said, I curse you and every woman forevermore that they'll never be able to keep a secret. Mm -hmm. So if someone's your blood, it will come out. Well, blood can mean if you committed a murder. One day everyone will find out. So, Kerakun, Kasi Kushi, Kasi means a cough. Let's say you come, you're supposed to give a speech, but you have very bad health. What will happen? <coughs> the cough will come out and everyone will know. Kerakun, Kasi Kushi, Kushi means happiness. If you're really happy about something, but you're trying to hide it, let someone see something in your eyes or <laughs> detect your behavior, how you're whistling while you're walking or something. <laughs> So, Kerakun, Kasi, Kushi, Vairi. Vairi means enmity. If you have enmities to someone, enviousness, you cannot hide it. 
one day it will come out. Mm-hmm. Very pretty. If you have a secret love for someone, you can hide for so long. But one, that's why the gopis in Vrindavan, they're always worried. Mm-hmm. Always worried that they'll be discovered. Mm-hmm. Their secret love for Krishna. Huh? Pretty, madup, madupan means intoxication. Huh? When no one's around, you get stoned. Huh? You're drinking or smoking something. And you can hide it for some time. Someone will find out, then everyone will know. Jana Sakala Jahan, everyone will know. So in the same way, the Braj Gopis, they're hiding their prey. But they'll speak in such a way, it might be even one word, and it gives the game away. Bapidam Natavaravapu Karnayo Karnikarnam Bibrad Bas Kanakan Kamishan Vajan Tim Tamalam Randran Veno Adara Sudaya Pudayan Gopa Brindai Brindaranyam Supadaramanam Prabhisad Gita Kirti Gopis are saying when Krishna is entering into the forest, leaving the village in the morning, he's playing his flute. Randran Venu Adarasuda, and he takes his flute and he fills the flute with the Adarasuda, the nectar of his lips. Oops. How did they know that there is the nectar in his lips? <laughs> they were trying to hide their love for Krishna, but they've just, it came Adarasuda, and this word is like a detective, finds a clue and then reports it to the local newspaper. <laughs> and then everyone knows. So, in this way, though gopis are hiding their love, somehow, by the way they're speaking, it will, it will come out. Panata dehinam papakashanam trinacharanu gam sreniketanam panipanapitam padam bujam krinukucheshuna krindi richchayam. Gopis are crying, calling Krishna, please come back and tear the pain from our heart by the touch of your lotus feet. But at the end, finally, Radharani said, Yate sujata charanam buruham staneshu Bhitashanai priyadadi mahika kaseshu Tenata vimmata sitadgata tena kimswit Kurpadi bi brahmati di bhavadaya shamna She's saying, Oh, see, Krishna, why are you wandering around in the forest? When I think about how you may be stepping onto some sharp stones, my mind becomes completely disturbed and I cannot live. If you don't come back, if I have no chance to serve you, I have no reason to live. So if you're not coming back, let me take the remainder of my ayu, my lifespan, and I'll donate that to you. I'll give up my life now and I'll donate my lifespan to you. You can have a long and happy life in Vrindavan. I'm going. Because Krishna, when I'm alone with you and I hold your soft lotus feet and I place them upon my heart, at that time I place them very, very gently, thinking that your feet are so soft and my body is so rough that you may be injured. Here, Radhika is directly explaining that she's not meeting with Krishna for her happiness. She only, she's only thinking what Krishna is feeling. Atmendriya priti banja taribali kam, krishnendriya priti icha dari prem nam. The desire to please your own senses is called lust. But the desire to just please the senses of Krishna is called prem. Prem ayvago paramanam kamya ityavagamat pratam ityadavod adyo pietam banchanti bhagavat priya. In the Adi Purana, it said that. The, the prem of the gopis, it's prem, but it's become famous by the name of calm, lust. Because it appears like that, but it's completely pure. Is there any evidence? Vanchanti Bhagavat Priya. All the great Mahabhagavats like Uddhav, Bhishma, Vyasadev, Shukadev Goswami, they've all glorified the love of gopis. They're all liberated, but still they want this. Vanchanti Bhagavat Priya. Vanchanti Yad Bhava Bhyo Muneo Vayamcha. Kim Brahma Jamma Beer Ananta Katara Sasya. Would have said, We all want this love, but we cannot get it. Alas, alas. How glorious are the Brajagopis. So, Radhika, her prem is so pure. Hmm? What is this prem? Rupa Goswami said, Samyak Masarin Taswanto, Mamata Kishayantika, Mamata Tishayan Kitaha. Bhavasa eva sandatma budai prema nigachate. 
when the heart completely melts and is infused with excessive mamata possessiveness, oh Krishna, you are mine. The why is called this brain? Sarvata dwangsa rahita satyapi dwangsa kayane yad bhava bandana yuna sa prema parikirtita. And all the causes for that love to be broken are present. Society says no, the Brahmins say no, the Vedas say no, my mother in law says no, husband says no, everyone saying no. All the causes for that love to be broken are present. Krishna even went and met with Chandravali. Everything that can break the love is present. But it's not never broken. It's always increasing. This is praying. Srila Krishna Skaraj Goswami gives an example. Anija Premananda Jadi Premananda Bade Sayanander Prati Bhakti Hoy Mahakrode This love is so wonderful. It gives Premananda such joy. But if that joy becomes an obstacle to service, then the devotee criticizes his own joy. Mm. Mm. Like the Ruka. Anga stambaram bamutungayantam premanandam daruko abhyanandat kamsarate vijane yena sakshat Shukadev Goswami is saying that once Krishna was sitting and his chariot driver Daruka took a fan and he was fanning Krishna. And he was feeling so much prem that he became stunned and couldn't move. And he closed his eyes and he lost consciousness. And then when that wave of ecstasy of love for Krishna died down, he opened his eyes and noticed that he'd stopped fanning and then criticized his own bliss. Fie on this bliss. To hell with this bliss. Who needs bliss? I stopped fanning my Krishna. So Daruka is the example. But the supreme example are Braja Gopis. The touch of Krishna's lotus feet is more cooling, more nectarian than millions of moons. But when they're about to feel the touch of Krishna's lotus feet on their hearts, they're not anticipating that pleasure. They're only thinking, will Krishna be happy? And maybe he won't. But he will be happy. But it's a symptom of Mahabhav is, Tatso Kepyati Shankaya. Even when Krishna is completely satisfied and completely in bliss, the nature of Mahabhav is to be worried that he's not fully happy. And try to please him even more. It's astonishing. So now one may rightly raise a question that in this final verse of Gopi Gita, Radharani is saying, Yate sujata charnam buruhamsta. Oh Krishna, when I take your lotus feet, I'm thinking of your happiness. So she's directly expressed her praying. It's a direct expression of love. She said, I'm not thinking of my happiness, I'm only thinking of your happiness. It's a direct expression of love. But I thought that love was crooked and was never expressed. Mm -hmm. huh? So now the, the uh, prasanga kram, the contextual, the dwani, the deep meaning, the rasa in the context is manifesting from Srimad Bhagavatam. It's like this. Let's say there's a man and he has a friend, a very good friend. And this friend loves tamarind chutney and samosas. <laughs> so that, that day in the morning, that man, he went to the shop. He knew my friend's coming today. So he went to the shop and he went to one shop that didn't have any tamarind or anything. He went, he went to many, in the end he found it. He found some tamarind and some chili and whatever to make the tamarind chutney. And he got all the ingredients and he came back and the whole morning he was making the tamarind chutney and making very fancy samosas. And then his friend arrived. His friend came in. Well, hey, what are you doing? Oh, nothing. And then he looked. He's making tamarind chutney. And so, that's my favorite. Are you making those for me? No. Uh, is it? He, hide, he dissimulates. He hides his love. But the result of the love is it becomes more intense. 
You know, if he if his friend had come in and said, you know, the whole morning I went shop, I went to this store and I went to that store and I couldn't find the right tamarind, you know, it was such a pain. But I found it in the end, and whole morning I've been making these samosas for you. <laughs> right? If he'd spoken this directly, then the love will go down. But instead, what are you doing? Oh, nothing. Huh? Are those for me? No. This is I like this. I'm making it for myself. <laughs> See? So, dissimulating the object of service and claiming it's for oneself, this makes the love more intense. Mm. And that's the meaning of the verse, Pranata Dehinam Padmakarshanam. Hmm? Gopi say, Krinukuteshuna Krindirich, please come back, Krishna. Because our hearts are burning with desire and we're suffering, and only the touch of your lotus feet can take it. In other words, come back for me. But it's not for them. They have no personal desire. They only want to please Krishna. But the nature of Prem is crooked, is avahita bhav. Hmm? And to keep the Prem, make it more beautiful. They dissimulate and speak in a completely different way. To hide, and Krishna understands that. When Krishna is listening, he knows. That's not, they, they, it's not that they're, they're feeling a burning and a pain and they want me to come back and extinguish that desire. That's, he, and so he, Krishna's rasik, he can relish it. Hmm? An ordinary person, maybe they can't understand. An ordinary person has no clue. Hmm. Reading Srimad Bhagavatam, no clue. Hmm. Huh? But Krishna's rasik, and he's relishing the prema of Prajagopis. But we see in the end, finally, when Radhika cannot live for another moment, she openly says, Yate sujata charanam buddha. When I hold your feet on my heart, I'm worried about you. Will you feel the happiness or not? This is a th so one may say the love will go down. No. Now Radhika's praying is so high. Come back to the example. There was a lamp inside a cottage. And the light was shining through the window. But you don't open the door. You don't open the windows. It will blow it out. But what if someone knocks over that lamp and everything gets on fire? And you're inside and... <gasps> And you're, you're, you're joking, you, you cannot live it so hot. What do you do? You throw open all the doors and windows. So that means that in the end, the, the fire of separation of Radharani has become so hot, she throws open the door and windows, and from her mouth, what she's really feeling comes out. So even though in ordinary circumstances the love would go down, in the context here, it's only indicating the vast the highest extent of Radhika's brain. Mm. Mm. And hearing that, hearing the other verses, Krishna could hide and watch and relish, but hearing that, Krishna could not uh, hold himself. His feet set off without his own permission and he just ran out from his hiding place and appeared before the gopis. Tasam avira butshori smayamana makambuja pitam baradara shagvi sakshan man matam man. So if Srila Rupa Goswami Pada had not revealed these things, no one would know. Jan Kali Rupa Sha Uriana Dharata Tan Braja Prema Mahadiri Kutarika Kona Kapata Udkarata Jan Kali Rupa Sha Uriana Dharata if Rupa Goswami had not appeared in this Kali Yuga, even though Chaitanya Mahaprabhu descended with a treasure chest full of jewels of brain, but it was locked with the key and no one would have been able to open it. But fortunately, before Lord Chaitanya left this world, he kept the key with Rupa Goswami. Rupa Goswami has opened and distributed the jewels that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give. You know, someone may say, oh, these gopis, they say, people say they're selfless and everything, but they get all jealous of each other. If their love is so pure, if their love is pure, how come they get jealous of each other? Hmm? Isn't that egotistical? Isn't that selfish? Hmm? Did they go in man? Makes no sense. 
Every single gopi in Vrindavan loves Krishna and only wants to please him. So if Krishna goes to another gopi, then why do gopis in another group get upset with him? Those gopis are also trying pleasing him. Isn't it the goal of all, isn't it the goal of all them to please him? Why would they become upset? Very deep, very deep. The reason is this. In Prem, there are two aspects that have to be considered. One is Pariman. Pariman means the extent of the Prem. Pariman, the measurement of the Prem. So the amount. And the other one is Jati, the type. So every gopi in Vrindavan has a different jati or parinam or both, different in both. That's what makes them all different. Hmm? Now in regard to the jati, the type of prem, Radhika has vinayata. Vinayata means gentleness, humility. Hmm? Vinayata is politeness, being reserved, vinayata. Hmm? So, Radhika and Chandravali have exactly the same amount of Vinayata, politeness, gentleness. However, the um, Parina, uh, uh, Pariman, the extent of Radhika's love is so vast that there is near Nigirna. Nigirna means swallows. It swallows her politeness. Hmm? So she's no longer polite. Hmm? She can speak harsh words to Krishna. You can criticize him. Parastri Chor. Kamuk Mukutamani. Crest jewel of lusty persons. Hmm? Thief of others. Hmm? Thief of the wives of other men. Parastri Chor. Karali Kanaptri Krida Karanga. You're just like a pet deer on the chain of Chandravali. Hmm? So Radhani can speak very strong words. So her politeness is swallowed by the extent of her praying. Whereas Chandravali, she has so much prem, but it doesn't completely bury her politeness. So some hu humility and, and politeness manifests. So she's more um, etiquette and protocol and coolness and uh, the um, ceremonial in her relationship with Sri Krishna. Mm -hmm. So now what happens is, uh, because of this, Radhika's prem is called Madhus Neha, love like honey. And Chandravali's prem is called, Sneha is, affection is called Grita Sneha, love like ghee. So because they have two different types of love, Radhika's love is more mm, combustible, more impetuous, more fiery, like honey heats your body. Mm? And Chandravali's love is more cool. Ghee becomes harder when it's in a cool environment. And it becomes more dense when it's in a cool environment. So the more etiquette and protocol is there, she's like very royal. Mm -hmm. Then her love is expressed more uh, in a more condensed way. So they have two different types of love. So because they have two different types of love, they have different idea of how to please Krishna. Mm -hmm. So, mito bhavasya vai jyate na bhavo rochate metaha Arochikata evayam akshantim janayat param. Sil Rupa Goswami Pad says that because the love of Chandravali and Radhika, it's very different. They don't have taste in each other's methods of service. Hmm? Radhika feels that the way Chandravali serves Krishna is inadequate. And the way Chandravali thinks the way Radhika serves Krishna is also inadequate. And because they're both focused on pleasing Krishna, they become upset if each one becomes upset if Krishna will go to the other one. And so the foundation of their jealousy and their envy, their rivalry towards each other, is that they both want to please Krishna so much. But because they have a different type of love, so they, they end up feeling that if Krishna goes there, once there was a there was a Ban Devi, that means a fairy of the forest. There are fairies who live in Vrindavan forests. Mm -hmm. They're called Ban Devis, fairies of the forest. And sometimes they interact with, with the gopis as well. The, chief, the, the leader of them, her name is Brinda. So there's Brinda and Veera. So one Ban Devi was very confused about Radhika's behavior. 
because Krishna had met with Chandravali and Radharani was so upset. So one Bandevi came to Radhika and said, Please, can you tell me about Prem Tattva? What's the nature of this love? Why are, why are you upset? Radharani said, Just, my dear fairy of the forest, try to understand. If a person goes to great difficulty to collect so many ingredients and cook a wonderful feast, and is waiting for their friend to come and take that feast, but instead their friend goes to someone else who's just got some dry stale leftovers from the previous day. <laughs> hmm? And they eat that. Hmm? And then eventually they come to you and they're already full with this tasteless stuff. Dry niras, no ras at all. And then they finally show up to meet with you. Then you'd be upset, right? Then the Bandev said, thank you for enlightening me on the Prem Tata. <laughs> So Prem, Prem is like this, hmm? where Radhika can hmm, be very uh, contrary with Krishna and it's very fascinating for Krishna. Hmm? Srila Rupa Goswami Pada said, Stotram meva tatastatam prakatayat chittasyadate vyatam nindapi pramadam prayachati parihasa sriyam vibhrati Doshena shaitam gunena gurutam kena pinatan viti prema swara sikasya kasya chidayam bikridati prakriya. Once Madhu Mangal asked his grandmother, O oh, Holy Mother, tell me, what is this spontaneous, natural love of Radha and Krishna? What is it like? Purnamasi Devi said, when someone has this love, then they become a bit disrespectful. How is that? Why? Because being respectful is a sign of tatastabhav. Huh? Let's say you're trying to get in the kitchen and your, your close friend's in the way and you, you just walk up and say, get out of the way and just go in. Huh? But if you're in a public place and there's a stranger there, you say, excuse me, sir. You show, but you show respect. Respect comes out when it's a person. You don't, you know, you don't hate them, you're not against, you don't even know them, you're just neutral. So in, in the terms of love, respect is a sign of neutrality. And if you're really close and you still show respect, then there's some neutrality in the heart. And so there's not really a rasa there. So if Radhika will be respectful to Krishna, hmm, then uh, it will be, it will be a, a type of tatastabhav. Or if Krishna will sometimes be mm, just respectful to Radhika, then Radhika will think, what's wrong? Hmm? Krishna knows that when Krishna goes to see Chandravali, and if Chandravali is extra respectful, then Krishna thinks, I'm in trouble. Huh? Yes, that's her mood. So, stotram eva tatastatam prakaratti tasidate ibatam. In Srimad Bhagavatam, there's a beautiful verse. Krishna has just killed, uh, Balaram has just killed Denakasura. And the day is over, and Krishna is returning with Balaram and all the coward boys in the evening. And all the gopis have been burning in separation from Krishna the whole day and now he's coming back and Shukadev Goswami says, Pitwa Mukunda Mukasaragam Akshi Bringais Tapam Jaho Virhajam Braja Yoshitoni Tatsat Kritim Samadigamna Vivshesha Gosam Savri Dahasa Vinayam Yad Apanga Moksham See Krishna's coming into the village. The gopis have gone to the, their balconies and the roofs of their homes, to their doorsteps and their gates. Hmm? And they're looking. And as Krishna is coming in, they, they see the, the dust raised by the hooves of the cows and the dust clears a little bit and they see Krishna's face, a bit tired from playing the whole day. Some perspiration is there. The dust from the hooves of the cows has stuck to the perspiration of his lotus face. And he's very sweet. And when he's a bit tired, he's even sweeter. Hmm? So Pitvama Kunda Mukha Negata Akshi Bringais and the eyes of Braj Gopis become like bumblebees, drinking the nectar of Krishna's lotus face. 
Tapam juhu virhajam. And the pain, the heat of separation they felt throughout the whole day is just pacified by being united with him. And when they see him, then they try to make eye contact with him. Hmm? And when they look at him, they become shy. Breathe, they become shy. Hmm? Why? That's a sign of desire. Because if there's no desire, there's no need to be shy. But if a female comes close to a, a hero for whom she has very strong desire, then because of that strong desire, and she's thinking it may show, and then she becomes very shy and hides her eyes. So they're hiding. But then they feel so much eagerness to look to Krishna, they were hiding, and then they glanced. And then seeing him, Krishna looked back, and Krishna expressed his panga moksham. He released the loving glance towards Braj Gopis, and then Braj Gopis began to smile with a great jubilation. Like this. So there's a very beautiful exchange of love and respect between Braj Gopis. As Krishna's entering the village and he's looking on that balcony, that window, hiding behind that gatepost, here and there. But Radhika is further in the village with one of her sakis. Her saki says, Oh Radhika, after a long time Krishna's returning from the forest. And now look in the distance. He's just coming into the village. And Braj Gopis are rushing to try to exchange glances with him. And Krishna is honoring them with a smile and honoring with them with a glance. But quickly making his way along the road. Mm -hmm. Let's go and prepare a quench. Mm -hmm. So this beautiful verse is expressing... You can see in Srimad Bhagavatam how all gopis are giving honor to Krishna, respecting him through their glances as he's coming into the village. When we, the followers of Rupa Goswami, hear that verse, then we experience on another completely different level. Why? Because we're the followers of Rupa Manjri, Lalita Saki, and Radhika, and we're not running to any balcony, any roof, or any gatepost. No way. Make Krishna sweat. The reason he's looking here and there and everywhere is because he's looking for Radhika. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that gopi saying, Oh Saki, now he's returning from the forest after a long, long day. There. Why is she saying this? Because Radhika was saying, He doesn't love me. Why does he send, spend so much time in that jungle? Mm -hmm. Why does he like to wander around in the jungle so much? So uh, Saki is saying, Oh Radhika, because all the trees of Vrindavan, they miss Krishna. The deer miss Krishna, the peacocks miss Krishna, the bumblebees miss Krishna. And because he's so soft-hearted, he wants to make them all happy and that's why he goes to the forest. Hmm? He loves you more than anyone, but he has to please them. And now he's returning and all the, all the doe-eyed gopis, gopis with beautiful doe eyes are running to glance at him. Hmm? Why is that Saki saying, Doe-eyed gopis, mriganayani. That's the word is mriganayani. If a woman is very beautiful, her eyes are very big. Then you, the compliment is mriganayani. Doe-eyed lady. Hmm? So Radhika's friend is saying, oh look at all the mriganayanis running to glance at him. Hmm? Mriganayani means, yes, danyas mamuda gatiopi or the eta. Deer have beautiful eyes, but they're dumb. <laughs> they're Buddha. They're foolish. So Mriganayani means not, not the doe-eyed girls. It means these doe-eyed girls they have doe brains. <laughs> they don't know about brain. Hmm? Why are all, they all running to get a glimpse of Krishna and Krishna's glancing to them? What do they know about brain? Mm -hmm. hmm? <laughs> but Krishna keeps moving. He's just, Radhika, he's just looking around. He's trying to find you. And that's why he keeps moving. Look, look. He's coming very quickly. He's not hanging around to talk to anyone. Because he's looking, he's seeing them, but that's not what he's looking for. So before he gets here, Radhika, let's go and disappoint him. And we'll prepare a quench. And we'll arrange to meet with him later, but we should disappoint him now. This is prayer. So stotra meiva patasta tam date batam. Where there's a show of respect. This is Tatastabhav. This is a neutral mood. There's no rasa in this. Be contrary. Mm. Be like a snake. Mm. Radhika's braid is like a snake that bites the heart of Krishna. And Rupa Goswami has written. Yeah. Huh? 
Navagorochanagorim Pravarindi Varam Baram Mani Stabakavidoti Vaini Vyalangana Panam Snatan Goswami said, Oh brother, what are you writing? She said, Right around his braid is like a snake. That's not very good. Uh, simile? Yeah. You should, uh, Rupa Goswami very humbly said, well, if you can think of something better, you can, can you change it? So now Goswami said, I can't think of anything better right now. Uh, and he went away. But then later he had a vision and saw a beautiful girl on a swing with her sakis. He said, oh, Lali, stop, stop, there's a snake behind you. And then the whole vision disappeared. Uh. And then he realized it was Radhika. And he came back to Rupa Goswami and said, whatever you write is fine with me. <laughs> Every word Rupa Goswami has written is real. He realized it first, then he wrote it. Hmm? So Stotra Meva Tatastatam. Rupa Goswami is writing how uh, there should not be respect in the love between Radha and Krishna. Nindapi Pramadam Prayachiti Parihasa Sriyam Bibrati. And when they criticize each other, they take it as a joke. Hmm? If someone criticizes you, you can become upset. But where there's love, there can be criticism. The other one laughs, he's just joking. Hmm? Oh Krishna, you're so crooked. You can't even stand straight. You're always tribanga. Your heart is so crooked, even you cannot stand straight. Hmm? And Krishna said, you also have faults. Hmm? You're crooked, you're hard, and mm, restless. These are faults. These are faults in a person's character. Chapalata, to be restless. To be kautilya, to be crooked, and to be the mm, katur, harsh. Hmm? Rad Radharani just laughed. Asaki said, yes, we know how, with the faults of Radharani. Her hair is crooked, curly. This is a good quality. <laughs> her eyes are restless. This is a good quality. And her chest is harsh. Hmm? These are all good qualities. So like this they joke with, they criticize each other, but it's all joking. Purnamasi Devi said, Radhika's love is such that if she sees a fault in Krishna, her love doesn't go down. And if she sees some good qualities in Krishna, her love doesn't go up. This is the nature of love in this world. We're attracted to someone who has good qualities. And if we see more good qualities, we like them more. And if we see a bad quality, we like them less. And if we discover more bad qualities, then we like them even less. Hmm? But Purnama said, this Radhika's love is not like that. Whether Krishna shows good qualities, her love doesn't go up and it doesn't go down if he does something bad. Her love's prema swara sikasya prakriya. Love is just going up and up and up and up by itself. Regardless of anything Krishna does, it's completely independent. Her prema has a life of its own. So, that Radhika, only that Radhika can completely please Krishna. And Krishna's beauty and sweetness is only manifest when he's in her presence. And only the followers of Srila Rupa Goswami, that is Rupa Manjari, have the opportunity to see that confidential meeting of Radha and Krishna when even Lalita and Vishaka will have to retreat to a distance. And therefore, we pray. Adadanastinam dantar idam jache puna puna Srimad Rupa Padambu Jo Dulisham Janma Jammani Taking a straw between my teeth, I fall on the ground and cry and beg again and again that lifetime after lifetime may I simply become a particle of dust on the feet of Srila Rupa Goswami. Srila Rupa Goswami Padaki! Bale Vrindavan Vyavilala Ki Jai Bale Saniwali Ki Jai 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 Sri Ram